Foot Clan, we have a jam-packed show today, breaking down more matchups. Watch as Mike Wright's world collapses in on itself during today's episode. Big-time news breaks, and we see his reaction. It's a good one. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, enjoy, and good luck in your fantasy playoffs. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Friday, December 16th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason with you. Deucer's Alley is full today. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, the Borgogan. Impressive uh, holiday spirit once again from Brooksy. Always in a Christmas hat this time of year. He's always he's got a Christmas spirit all year long. That's his just general spirit. When you're that wealthy, yeah, like people, you know, sometimes are not with me when me and Jason when November first we declare it's Christmas time. Uh, well. On Jan one, mm-hmm. Brooks opens, kicks open the door, and he says it's Christmas time. Yeah, his Puts his w- lights his, up on Jan one. His window for not Christmas yep. season is December twenty sixth, twenty seventh, twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirtieth, and if there's a thirty first. You don't know for sure. Is. No, there, there is. I do know that one <laughs> okay. thanks to uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's. <laughs> But uh, most months, don't quiz me on that. I don't know the knuckle thing that people <laughs> oh, do. Oh, it's going to say, do you you know it? You where you just go forward and then you go back? No, that makes no sense. Isn't there to a me. rhyme too? Uh, Thirty days has September, April, June, and November. There you go. Yeah, buddy. If I knew that rhyme, I don't know what it means. Interesting. So we're just leaving February completely out of the rhyme. Yeah, February is kind of just cast. That's off. the freebie. Mm-hmm. It's the runt of the okay. litter. All right. What year is it? Ooh. We looked at this already for next year's Christmas. <laughs> it's not a leap year next year. Okay. We learned that. Uh, welcome, man. Busy day today. Eight more matchups to cover. Fantasy face-off. And then the suspense of the Wheel of Shame. We've got the news and notes, which some crazy news just broke that um, yeah. we'll, keep, uh, we'll was, keep secret for a moment here. I was doing okay, fellas. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were trying to have I a was, positive attitude. I had my head up, and I was like, you know, they're like... So we, we kind of laid out where I was for fantasy football last night, but if, if you didn't watch it, there was a Thursday night football game. <laughs> San Francisco against the Seattle Seahawks. Christian McCaffrey, it, wasn't that the biggest workload of the season for yes, him? Yes, it yep. was. And it was like as it was unfolding, I didn't have this thought going into it because it doesn't matter. It's Christian McCaffrey. But as it was unfolding, it's like, oh, I'm like it's a Thursday night game. So they have the extended rest. I wonder if that factored into of like let's just let's just overload Christian McCaffrey tonight because he gets a couple extra days of rest. Neither here nor there. It was just a, a thought I had. But I was playing against my stream of the week, Brock Purdy and George Kittle, mm. and the were they, were they involved in the game plan? Uh, I mean, a couple receptions here, just four for George Kittle. Oh, that's, oh, not, that's a lot. not bad. 93 and two touchdowns and oh no and two very inept uh defensive plays by the Seattle Seahawks who had multiple chances to tackle George Kittle which granted it's not the easiest thing I understand tackling he is a man once Kittle's at full speed it's it can be tough to take him down he's very Travis Kelsey like but that felt yeah, I, w- I was watching. It was immediate. It <laughs> happened right away. Yeah, it, it was it was brutal. And we also give in our league of record, if a touchdown <laughs> is more than 40 yards, we give a two-point bonus, yeah. which it was. One of his touchdowns was, um, and that was a stack. So it was a four-point bonus, 24-point play. It was a 24-point play. So we learned, of course, yesterday or the day before that Mike – um, had sent his family off to a resort. Thank it, goodness. Was there yeah. was there some uh, renovations done at the Bro, house? Bro, I've got a basement now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. All right. Well, no that- machines needed. Just rage. No, that's <laughs> rage and a sledgehammer. You can save a lot of money on demo work <laughs> if you do it yourself. Uh, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Well, today's winner of a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com is the Candle Making Butcher from Patreon. So uh, that is their name. I hope you weren't facing George Kittle. Yeah, well, if he was, he's got 100 bucks. <laughs> so $100 to fantasychamps.com. Fantasychamps.com is the best place to get your trophies. It's a good time of year. Put that in your mental noggin of where to get them here. Uh, you're going to win a championship in two more weeks. I am? Time. Well, not you, because we're in the league together. You'll win one in our Dino Junior. Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow the show, you can watch it at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. I suggest you go over there, click the bell, because we have a live stream this afternoon for uh, the DFS. Yeah, baby. Fellas, Borg and Betts live in studio. So ballerslive.com is another place you can go to make sure you don't miss it. It'll be on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, any platform that starts with a T is where we stream. Mm-hmm. Mm. What yeah. about, isn't Twillow a, is that, is, I don't what's... think that's one. Mike. No, but we're definitely on Tinder. Uh, <laughs> so just make sure, you know, watch <laughs> live. Make sure you swipe the <laughs> correct direction. Right. I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know is which right? way, but I think swipe. Hey, right. young, uh, we got Matthew, hey, young, uh, young, unmarried young, young folk. Uh, well, Matthew Betts happily married, but he's a younger folk. So maybe he knows cause he has friends. Nope. He, yeah. Okay. No idea. Oh, all uh-huh. right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure. Almost got him. <laughs> <laughs> all right well last night we talked about it the the game brock purdy two touchdowns he didn't have to do a lot in this game just not mess up he, he tried once to mess up but he looked yeah that would have been sweet uh <laughs> he looked actually he looked pretty bad for a lot of this game I, he had the two huge plays to george kittle which were fantastic and a very well schemed up by kyle shanahan executed by purdy but i mean it it was it was not great for for him. Two hundred yards, uh, two touchdowns. I mean, fantasy wise, it was it was good. I'm saying just watching his play on the field, he looked like he took a step back. Really? Yeah, he did to me. I don't think that at all. I thought he was great. I uh, thought he he executed the offense. It was a it was basically a shutout game he, script. He looked. I mean, this was a. Uh, it looked to me though like if there was any sort of good defense by Seattle, then Brock Purdy would have been in trouble. I'm concerned for him next week. Interesting. I I'm completely on the other side of that. I thought he was exactly what they needed last night. Yeah. Well, he he was exactly what they needed, which was a game manager. Hundred and seventeen passer rating to execute a phenomenal system. But I I would agree that he didn't show anything that said if a, if if a play breaks down, if he's got to do something on That's his own. That's what I mean. Um, he he can run this system great. And when you're playing against uh, a mediocre defense, I think he'll be a fine stream. Now next week they're gonna uh, play the Manders. Um, Manders slightly better defense, but still not a not a world beating defense. They might have Chase Young back by then, but we'll we'll see. I I think he is good enough to run this system, but I also think that almost every quarterback in the league and half the backup quarterbacks, if you put them on the Forty ers with that roster and uh, Shanahan, I think they they do pretty pretty well. Uh, George Kittle four for ninety three. Brandon Ayuk was a disaster two for nineteen. If you hoped for a big game without Debo, you didn't get it. This was. A matchup that on paper looked good, but like I said, this this game script was a shutout game script for the majority of the game. You don't, you know, Chris McCaffrey had 26 carries in this one. Uh, the defense was outstanding, had basically two opportunities yes. to score. One was called back due to a, a questionable call on Joey Bosa landing on the quarterback, and uh, you got really bad news for the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett broke his index finger. Mm-hmm. He His season is now in question. Uh, that takes Geno Smith to a very dangerous place as a fantasy start moving it does, forward. Yeah. It takes Kenneth Walker there, too, because this offense is just not going to be as effective. Lockett was the leading receiver last night. Nine targets, seven for 68. Nobody. I said Joey Bosa. Okay, it's Nick Bosa. Thank you. You got it. Um, a Bosa brother. Yep. But Tyler Lockett does set the record for the most like fall downs immediately on catches yeah, well, like it it's the way he's played forever and it's, it's ironic because he got himself hurt it, yeah I mean, he did right now but I mean that's part of his strategy is I'm not gonna take a big hit 
There was one that he did that was egregious. There's oh you can uh, where he pe- where he went have, down and his own teammates ran up to him and were like get up get up get up get up. <laughs> there people have cut up plays of Tyler Lockett just catching it and jumping to the ground. But I mean I don't know he's <laughs> he's a little he's a little guy he's yeah he's a little more svelte. If you if you stuck with it and played Kenneth Walker, you should be thanking your mm-hmm. lucky stars that he had that whatever thirty yard thirty three yard uh, right reception. at the very end because that saved a complete catastrophe he didn't Uh, look bad to me in this game actually I thought he looked good but the San Francisco 49ers defense which was you know basically number one against the run it it was a tough matchup but what he did do is he proved the eyeball test that the ankle is not a worry going up against Kansas City Chiefs next week I'm really excited for Kenneth Walker next week sure all right uh let's turn the page on that game get into this breaking news that is uh oh so surprising News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we found out moments before the show that Jets doctors will not clear Mike White for contact and thus Zach attack (laughs) Wilson. If you, like, this morning. We'll start the game against the Lions. This morning, if you just out of nowhere heard, like, a collective groan that just was like you heard a low rumbling oh. that was that was everyone in the united states of america not related to zach wilson uh Corey davis just ruled out for that game as well Here, here's what i will say if you want to find your silver lining since mike you came into the office this morning despite the stack against you you said i'm gonna say positive christian mccaffrey had a nice game for you and i was like man that mike white guy <laughs> He's well, going to put up a big game. Well, he was your quarterback. But listen, here is, here's the silver lining. You mentioned yesterday that you were going to get a player to put up zero points uh, because that's been happening to you. Sure. I, I mentioned it earlier in the week. I was very afraid. I love the upside of Mike White, but I was very, very afraid this would be a playoff week. You get Mike White for three plays. He gets popped in the ribs. The fact he was ruled out, like he's been practicing, but the doctors literally said, you don't get to play football this week because you're that injured. If he had been out there, the risk was significant that you got half a game of Mike White, half a game with Zach Wilson. At least you get the advantage of knowledge today, right? It's Friday morning. Yeah. You get to make plans. Um, It's before the Saturday games, right? Because you could have had Saturday games go by. It lets you make decisions around Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson that are different. I think that's a great point. I mean, this, this news basically proves the level of risk was higher playing Mike White than we thought because they believe that his chance of re-injury or worsening uh, due to playing was legitimate. So, yeah, I think even though right now when you hear the news, it's awful for losing Mike White as a starter. It's it's a, a downgrade for some of the – you know, we, we've liked Tyler Conklin. We've liked Elijah Moore. Uh, the matchup is great. Now I am much less optimistic about those guys. But you're right. This could be a uh, very good news for them being prepared ahead of time, as opposed to an in-game injury. One of the things that's complicated here as well, and we haven't talked about it yet because this news just broke. But Zonovan Knight was a you know he's somebody that people have been staying in the flames with. If the offense isn't as successful, if you're not running 71 yeah. plays a game, if you look at the evidence of how Detroit's playing against the run. If you don't have the threat of the pass, you know, his ceiling might come down a little bit this week, even though I think the game plan will be to give him the ball more. Yeah, but probably more on the ground. The last three games, he's had 10 receptions, and we've seen kind of the the splits between when Zach Wilson plays and doesn't play with whoever the running back is, when it was Michael Carter um, or uh, Brees. The, the, the passing going to the running back has been – um, more without Zach Wilson. So it, I, I do feel like there's a downgrade for Zonovan. If you are looking to pivot from Mike White, if you've made your decision, you were going to go with him. Uh, options on the waiver wire, they might be thin. Russell Wilson was back to limited, and he plays Arizona. He plays at home. The Cardinals are beat up. Their pass rush is going to be hurting. I don't want to play Russell Wilson at all, but would you play him if he's active? Because if he's active, his concussion thing is over, right? It's not a yeah. It's not it's, like a positional player. You're not you're not doing a halftime, and it's not a hamstring thing or something. With Russell, yeah. So would you play Russell Wilson active? 
or would you play Jared Goff against the Jets' defense? What do you think, Jason? I would play. <laughs> I would play Jared Goff in that situation. I think there's another player that is on waivers, though. That um, more interesting. That's a little bit more interesting, which is Aaron Rodgers. Um, Aaron Rodgers now. I'm looking, I don't see him. Well. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about our waivers. I'm just yeah. Talking, what are we? What what talking, conversation are we having here? I thought we were talking about me. Well, yeah. Uh, for the for the wide foot clan, for the <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people listening, they might have Aaron Rodgers on a few of their waivers because he's been you know very bad this year. And if he is available out there, the matchup seems uh, pretty good against the Rams. And your Rodgers is a great start. Yeah, you've got Christian Watson. You you've got. Um, Dobbs back and active, you know, the, and then and they're in a must-win situation. Daniel Jones against Washington is a pivot option in deeper leagues. Derek Carr against New England. Oh, uh, I would not do that. Yeah, I I get it. Uh, the, the Daniel I mean, Jones you might not have a choice. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, but we're I, if we're framing this of the of Jared Goff, because I think that it's possible he's out there on a lot of uh, wires as well. I know you didn't do it on purpose, but it seemed like you winked at me right there. No, that's – dude. I, like my, when you said Jared Goff, you gave me a wink, no, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. That's not you want a, me to pick him up? It is, that is, the, it is not a wink. That is just <laughs> – my, my face is not being controlled right now <laughs> by, my, by my brain. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that happens. <laughs> uh, when, when you are, are you tilted, having a, a Mike White seizure on the show? <laughs> fellas, have you ever tried to run – a very popular podcast at the same time as talking to your co-manager as same as knowing that in about oh your waivers are in about, about an hour run. we got to get waivers oh, <laughs> like, man. like my multitasking doesn't have room to control my face anymore yeah, the <laughs> blinking not, is, is <laughs> going, no longer involuntary he has to he has to remember to blink uh dude, get, God. Dude, like breathing is is a problem right now Okay, well, we'll get you some help. Smelling salts, get the <laughs> smelling salts this, in here. This is part of why I think we have been successful oh as fantasy gosh. analysts because we aren't sitting up on some ivory tower looking down at how the fantasy landscape is. We care so I much. I was with Mike White. We're on the burning <laughs> boat with y'all. Yeah. We're out there on the sea <laughs> in flames. Yep, that's the playoffs for you. Cool. Uh, so that's that's the big news on the Jets situation. Uh, I had just picked Mike White up to play this morning for our family league, and uh, I'm going right back to Jared Goff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm stuck. All right, uh, official injury designations for Saturday's game. Jeff Wilson, DMP, DMP, and limited, questionable for the game in Buffalo, which, Jason, you weren't on the footcast yesterday, but the amount of weather sources that I looked at on the footcast <laughs> – that gave me conflicting precipitation yes. chances in Buffalo. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's across the board from from the weather underground to the weather channel to to Apple to Google. You've got somewhere between a, an 11 and 100% chance yep. of precipitation. I know it's going to snow on Friday. I'm hopeful, and I don't want to, like I said on the footcast, I'm not willing yet, yet, to make a significant weather-related benching of anybody in that game but that's how weather works right like you talk about what it might be at the beginning of the week you got to wait until friday saturday to figure that out saturday's the game so just you know this might be something you pull the trigger on a a gabe davis benching you know <laughs> five minutes before the game type sure. of thing yeah and the only other player that i think really comes into question because it, you're not going to change your opinions much on the running game if anything it would go up and you're not binging Tyree Kill or Stephon Diggs, so it's pretty much you're looking at Gabe Davis and you're looking at Tua. That's I agree. Tua I agree. is you know if you if I had Tua and someone like Aaron Rodgers is out on the waiver, I'm picking him up just in case. Yep. If the weather that morning looks atrocious, uh, I want to be prepared. I agree. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Tyler Huntley cleared concussion protocol. We expect him to start for the Baltimore Ravens. Great Amari, news for Mark Andrews. Amari Cooper removed from the final injury report. Kenny Pickett returned to a limited practice coming off the concussion. Uh, the team is preparing Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph. You should prepare your tiers if you have uh, Deontay Johnson or George Pickens and you're counting on a big game. It's just going to be tough. Well, apparently Deontay and the Muth did not practice. It can be tougher then. Thursday. Yeah. So that's cool. Come yeah. On. Should we? Should we is be... the Muth who's supposed to counter affect the George Kittle punch you just received, Mike? He was the plan. Hmm. 
You you got more plans you're making over there. This guy's rebuilding oh, his whole man. playoff roster right now. Right on the Friday. What is happening? Live on the show. Um I I would I would suggest that if you have Pat Fryermuth, you need to have another option available or at least be aware of who is your pivot I'm on the waivers. I'm out of bench spots, bro. I know that's why I was saying be aware of who is available on a waivers because if he is a surprise inactive, it won't be Shocking! It will not be a surprise and active. I, I picked point. up what you were putting down when you winked at me. You said pick up a quarterback and tight end off of waivers. Coming, yeah, coming up. Right? Yeah, go do it. Uh, T. Higgins, <laughs> Mike's Mike's starter. Uh, hamstring injury limited oh. on Thursday. Okay, oh. all right. Tyler Boyd. <laughs> Here's my warning. <laughs> this this is the Mike White playoff. Who? Just collapse show. Who put this news together? Did White. you say Mike White or he, Mike Wright? Uh, it's one and the it's same. Both. This, the this news is my is, entire team. Yes, yes. By the way, bench Tyler Boyd under all circumstances. The the way he talked about the finger injury was that I still have legs. I'll figure it out. That's his <laughs> quote. So the finger mixed with all of the bad games, please don't oh play him. Gosh, dude. Uh, Hollywood Brown added to the injury report with an illness. Cardinals are uh, ready to crash and burn in Denver. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We're jumping into Mike's Fantasy Forecast. Fantasy Forecast. This is entertaining. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm watching from, a, from I'm afar. I'm having a, a great time over <laughs> yeah. here. I'm so sorry. Mike's but, but. pits are sweaty. His eyes are <laughs> winking and blinking. Like, you don't know what you're going to do. No, I don't. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's talk about some of these games. We covered the Colts, Vikings, Ravens, Browns, Dolphins, Bills, Eagles, Bears, Falcons, Saints, Lions, Jets, Steelers, Panthers yesterday. So if you want to get the breakdowns, I recommend not listening to the Lions-Jets breakdown <laughs> <laughs> based on the injury to Mike White. But uh, you caught that update today. Eight games left. Quick reminder to take those Saturday players out of your flex spots if you can put them into positional spots, especially this week with injury news. Uh, you you want optionality. I'm going to put it that way. You want the ability to, you know, I've got a league where I've got four guys going Thursday or Saturday. Depending on their performance, my flex spot will be either, you know, a higher upside Darius Slayton or a, a higher floor Cordero Patterson. Like, I'm going to make a decision entirely based on trajectory of the week yeah and right now this moment while you're listening uh, gently and casually pull over to safety and set your lineups because you're <laughs> if you've got the 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 rhythm where you know you you look at this saturday night or sunday morning and you forget that there are three saturday games there's a lot of relevant fantasy players when you set that lineup yes andy is right make sure that those guys are not in the flex i also love the visual of maybe hundreds of thousands of cars that are on the side of the road Just right pulling now. over as if we're a live show and everyone's listening at the same moment. That would be okay. great. All right. Well, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right. The Dallas Cowboys are 10-3, and three and they take on the Jacksonville Jaguars at 5-8. and eight. Dallas is four-point favorites in this one. Over-under is 48, according to DraftKings. The Dallas offense, uh, look, they won last week. It didn't feel like a win, but it was a win. And uh, it was a win if you had uh, Pollard, whose price finally shot up in DFS relative to Ezekiel Elliott. And then uh, Zeke has scored in, I think, 150 straight games. Is that the way? It's, just, it's how it feels right now. Eight touchdowns the last six. Yeah, so he's had – I mean, their offense is going. They're the fifth and most uh, points – or fifth most total points uh, over the last month. They're 5-1. And, one. and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. The over-under is 48 points. We know the Dallas defense is good, but the game plan – and uh, Doug Peterson, they've been putting some things together, especially early in games. I don't know if you guys remember this, but the Jacksonville Jaguars jumped all over Philadelphia in their matchup earlier this year. The question is whether they can keep it going beyond those uh, early game plans. It will. Jason, you, you're looking perplexed. I don't know whether I, to ask you about it. Yeah, no. So I'm, I'm looking at our show dog, looking at some of these notes, and this blows my mind. The Jaguars have lost 20 consecutive games to NFC teams. 
that's half the league. You <laughs> like you've lost twenty you, in a row, and you don't play NFC teams that much. I right? mean, that's that's just uh, kind of mind blowing. So they've been bad for a long time. That is true. That's true. Yeah, but they're the, getting better. What's their highest win total in the last five years? Um, that's not going to be more than like five or six. I'm trying. I'm I'm looking at this. I uh, guess that's a good point. Yeah, here's here's their wins since 2018: five and eleven, six and ten, one and fifteen, three and fourteen. So I'm guessing those two years were <laughs> were part of that, a big part of the streak. They're five and eight this year, though. Yeah, five and eight. They've been playing well. They're staying competitive, and uh, you know, I think I think there's hesitation from some because of the Dallas defense, but. I'm really not going to – like, I think Trevor Lawrence is okay this week. I think Christian Kirk's in your lineup. I think Travis Etienne is nervously in your lineup. Zay Jones, I think you can spot start that man. Well, it's, that's well, his name. He's a spot start. Yeah. So that well, I have to say it that way, otherwise you might rely on him, That's and he will not okay. perform. That's right. I, I think, you know, Travis Etienne is someone that's been a little disappointing. I see him very, very similar to how I saw Kenneth Walker, where – it's not a great matchup, but you're going to be involved. If you get, you know, a 33-yard reception at the end of the game, you're going to be happy. You know, if he falls in the end zone, you're going to be happy. He's, he's just kind of a, a low-end RB2 that you can start. I don't expect big things from him, though, against the Dallas Cowboys. Well, would you play him or the uh, the second wide receiver, Michael Gallup, on the Dallas side? I, I would play ETN over the second wide receiver. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Zay Jones. Would you play Zay Jones or Michael Gallup? Ah, uh, in in this matchup, I think I would. Oh, Zay Jones or Michael Gallup. Interesting. I uh, I'm going to take the matchup side and go with Gallup. Your the Dallas side of the football, it's pretty great. Dak was Jason's start of the week. Zeke and Pollard are in. Lamb is in. Uh, you know, Dalton Schultz is in. Ten targets last week. A lot, a lot of questions regarding Evan Ingram this week. Chasing the, you know, you. It's really hard to bench a player that that put up that kind of a performance regardless of the matchup, right? I know Dallas, Jason's illustrated it earlier this week, not chasing Evan Ingram because Dallas is number one against opposing tight ends over the last six weeks. But I don't think you have to bench him, but I wouldn't I wouldn't make him an auto start. Yeah, either. I'm not forcing him in. Yeah, now, you're, you're what not about chasing, Schmevin, though? You're not chasing last week's points. I, I view Evan Ingram the same going into this week as I, as I viewed him almost every week, which is, he can he can have a good game. He can be involved in the pass game. He completely disappear as well. He's just a, a normal streaming option, and usually with those, I'm trying to play the better matchups. This isn't one of them. Schmevin or Greg D against Arizona? Greg Dulcich. Schmevin or Oconquo against the Chargers? <sighs> Oconquo one's... assuming – I mean, Traylon Burks, has he, has he been ruled Actually, out I might here? have passed up a Traylon Burks news blurb here. Remain sidelined. Yeah, so he's not going to play. I'll, I'll, I'll go with uh, Oconquo. All right, let's take a quick break and come back with the remaining matchups. The Kansas City Chiefs are 10 and 3. They take on the 1, 11 and 1. 1. 1. 1. Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Kansas City minus 14, the over/under is 49 and a half. What do you do here? I mean, we have been facing the uh, the Houston Texans are not a good play for quarterbacks. No, I mean, it, it is really funny. I've looked at this matchup for a long time. As soon as we started looking towards the playoffs, you saw that Mahomes was going up against the Texans and in, in week one. And that was, I mean, currently on the season, they are the worst matchup for for quarterbacks for fantasy purposes quarterbacks do not need to do much this is why Andy you've got Isaiah Pacheco as a start of the week he's a great start he should have a phenomenal game he's been seeing 15 plus opportunities pretty much the last month so I, I love him Mahomes though is interesting because every, they run so much through short passes mm -hmm. that are set up where even when you are up by three scores, I don't think they just hand the ball off. I think they continue running little screens and doing safe plays that will go to Patrick Mahomes statistics. You're not going to bench him obviously, but I, but there's no chance that you get a 40 point performance out of Patrick Mahomes and some great big dominant, uh, you know, game. Cause they just won't need it. I think it's, possible because I think it's possible that still all the touchdowns go to Patrick Mahomes uh, to me for fantasy purposes the rules are different for rushing quarterbacks and Patrick Mahomes because that that offense like 
if they just when they get by the goal line, they love the 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 bowling play where mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes gives the underhand to just whoever it is, usually Kelsey, but sometimes the it's, bowling play. I love it. <laughs> or the tap pass. Yeah, they just he, they do team, other things. The defense for the Texans will fall for any tricks that make Travis Kelsey all alone someplace. So I I'm, I still have Mahomes in this week with full confidence. And and ironically, while they have shut down the quarterback, they've been terrible at guarding tight ends. So in, in this situation where the tight end is pretty much half of your offense, uh, I need you, know, you, Travis. I need you big time. <laughs> He's going to have a great game. Pacheco's going to have a great game. Mahomes will have a good game. And then outside of that, I don't know who I really am excited to start. The passing, the receiving options, uh, I would order it. Juju uh, first, and really that's the only guy that I really want to take a shot at. I think I agree at. with that, yeah. And then I don't want uh, – you know, I, I just don't think that the receiving core adds up to 200 receiving yards, and it's going to be, you know – uh, split between a lot of different options. Like yeah, they only give up 20 points a game. So breaking that up across a bunch of wideouts is tough. Now, Jarek McKinnon is a player that has been... Uh, he's very tough this he's week. He's been going into the start-sit tool a lot on the website. People worried about, can I start Jarek McKinnon? The matchup against running backs is great. You talk about running through the air a little bit. I think I, McKinnon's a flex. I, I think you can flex him, and that's fine because of those like you know little screens, but the he is not the he is a part of the passing game yeah that won't be needed as much if you just look at his carry counts going back the last you know six carries eight carries zero carries six carries one carry three carries he is not there uh on the ground running back which will be used the second half of this game what do you do with the houston options in this game damian pierce is not going to play is rex burkhead rex burkhead or antonio gibson gibson Okay, let's take it down a tier. Rex Burkhead. Give me another. Give me another secondary well, type of Kareem say, Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Oh yeah, or there Rex you go. Burkhead. Uh, probably still Kareem Hunt. The, I'm more interested in Gumba Wale because, like, I get that they held their own a little bit here with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not going to project that at all. For, yeah, I'd play like, Chuba over the, Rex. The Kansas City Chiefs are just different. So I, if I'm going that disgusting direction, <laughs> I want the pass-catching running it's, back what, at least. It's so confusing to me, though, because Rex was the pass-catching running back. Do you understand? Like, right, that, Rex he was, was the, the pass-catching running back when it was Pierce. Pierce. So wait, now he's not? because yeah, well, He was at the beginning of the year, and that's kind of transitioned out. Okay. Nico Collins not practicing. Brandon Cooks could be back. If Brandon Cooks is out there, this is a Chiefs defense that necessarily gives up fantasy points to wideouts over the course of a game. I, I really do want the wide receiver one for the Houston Texans in this game. They're going to have to throw the ball, and they're going to find enough success to have fantasy relevance. It's just a matter of whether or not that is Brandon Cooks, who's been missing games with a calf injury. And terrible all year. And terrible all year before that. Or whether it will be Chris Moore. I would prefer it to be Chris Moore. You don't have fears of the calf injury, having Brandon Cooks, you know, play a little bit and go out. So, you know, if Brandon Cooks plays, I'm not playing Chris Moore. I just I don't have the confidence that the targets will be there. Hopefully you can avoid Texans altogether. Yep. Patrick Mahomes has been 14-plus point favorites five times in his career. In those games, his opponents averaged 13.9 points, and they've scored – fewer than 10 points in the last three of those this is not the kind of offense and situation where you're going to get the Dallas performance I don't believe Arizona's four and nine they travel to mile high to take on the Broncos who are three and ten. Oh, what a fun game this will be <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook has the line at Denver minus three the over under is 37 Russell Wilson could be back out there uh, he was cooking a little bit last week. He was. Colt McCoy will start for Arizona. Masterful at the dink and dunk offense that offers very little excitement. James Conner has been outstanding. 71 of 75 snaps last week was a great play. He's one of the very few true every down running backs for their team. You know, you've got like the the guys like Christian McCaffrey and now James Conner, where he's just all of it. He gets you know spelled a time or two in the game, and otherwise he's going to be in there 
for every play, for all the goal line. He's going to catch the ball. He's going to receive 15-plus carries. Now, this isn't a great matchup. It's not the opponent on the other side of the field that you would want to see your running back lined up against, but he's he's played through some bad matchups. I, I feel like he has to be in your lineup unless you have phenomenal options. I think he's a very good option this week. Yeah, James Conner has been really, really good. Opportunities up in the you know 28 opportunities against the Chargers. 22 last week against New England where he was very good. I agree. Cardinal options. Hollywood Brown is now listed as an illness on Thursday. I think that really takes him off the must-start category. It's Agreed. already a bad matchup. Um, you know, I don't know who's catching the ball outside of James Conner and DeAndre Hopkins in this game. That's the problem. I don't have somebody that I'm like, well, you have to start the Dorch. I mean, he wasn't even out there. Robbie Anderson was getting catches, and Correct. A.J. Green was out there, and then Trey McBride, not enough targets. This is a road game with a backup quarterback against one of the best defenses in the league. You play a stud and a stud only. So it's Hopkins and then check out. Yeah. Like, that's the receiving options for me in this game. On the other side, however, the matchup's delicious. Latavius Murray's Mike's start of the week. Greg Dulcich is my start of the week at tight end. Arizona is dead last in the NFL. They give up about 15 fantasy points to the tight end position every week. So not only is that crazy bad for this year, but historically since 2014, that's 285th out of 288 teams. That's like a almost a new historic record for Arizona. They're bad against tight ends. Jerry Judy, very involved. I think he's in play as well. Is he in play if it's Brett Ripien? Are you gonna Are you gonna be Are you gonna be starting Ripien? I I saw myself yeah. do it. Yeah, I, I saw, didn't know. I what wondered to... if I was gonna get called out there. I just made eyes to everybody. Yeah, that's all. That's fine. Ripping, uh, ripping. If if he's ripping the ball, do you still like? It's pronounced ripen. Or oh, thank you, ripen. Because mm -hmm. because you want to yes. you want it to get sweet. You go whoo. That's ripe. <laughs> oh, so now it's yeah, smelly. It, no, it's not a good ripe. Is this your, isn't is, fruit. This is, he is your underpants. new starter. Is he your new starter for? Uh... <laughs> look, stay tuned. No, I look. Yes, yes is my answer to your question. I he, agree. He's, he's being he's in play regardless of whether it's Brett uh, Ripeing or not. <laughs> Ripeing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now you're adding letters. Respect yeah. the man. Oh, yeah. I, I am so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what you didn't watch, foolish games we were playing here. You didn't watch his pops in Washington growing up? I don't get it. Brett Rippon's father? He's his oh. uncle. Uncle. Okay, whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, the answer is no. Yeah, the yeah. answer is no. Didn't he take him to a Super Bowl? They won a Super Bowl, yeah, Washington. Yeah. Brett, right? Wait, same name? Mark. Mark. <laughs> Brett. Yes, like, it is look, Brett. Look at Mr. NFL Trivia over here. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, but I the Brett Rippon sounds right. That's because it's look. I had a nineteen ninety nine ninety one uh, NFL book when I was growing up, <laughs> and I memorized that thing so well. It was not very accurate. They were playing. They were playing snow games in Buffalo back then too. I okay. Remember that? Yeah. Put, a, put a roof on they're, it, and they're never uh, gonna stop. Can we move to the next matchup? <laughs> yes, please. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said Brett. <laughs> the New England Patriots are seven and six. They take on the five and eight Raiders. The Raiders are just a knife twist to their fans every week. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Las Vegas minus one and a half. The over under is forty four. Mm hmm. What? Is that surprising to you? What? It, are you are you gonna hit the button? I don't even. <laughs> I mean, I I don't feel like it's fair. It's a one and a half point line. But yeah, the, the New England's gonna win the game. Are we kidding? Well, then hit the button. All right. Andy's almost upset of the week. I'll oh. add a little something to it. They're okay. going gonna to win by more than five. Uh, this is, if you don't think Bill Belichick is going to outcoach uh, Mr. McDaniels here when the game is excruciatingly important to the Patriots, um, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Mac Jones. I think he's playing better. I think the offense is giving him an opportunity to play better, which is really the problem. This is a uh, a defense that's going to step up here. Devontae Adams, look, it's it's not a great matchup. They're the Patriots are fifth against opposing wide receivers. You're not going to bench Devontae. Nope, but, doesn't matter. But you're going to just kind of understand that this is what the Patriots do. They try to eliminate the best option. They're the number three defense against the run. This is 
temper your Jacobs and Adams expectations, but play them anyways. Yeah, this is a game that I see going uh, the route of the under because one of these offenses is pretty good for fantasy purposes for you know just points on the board, and that's the Raiders, but they're going up against a really tough Patriots defense that I agree with you will completely out-coach them. Um, the other side, the, the, the Patriots have an opportunity against a really bad Raiders defense, except all their offensive guys are hurt. I mean, we don't know who is playing in this game. I Ramondre think Damian Stevenson. Harris is going to be the starter. I, okay. I'm pretty definitive about that now based on practice. <clears throat> yeah, he's been practicing in limited fashion. Ramondre has not practiced at all this week. So let's say he is out there. We don't know his entire health, but we don't know Jacoby Myers, who is right. probably not going to play. He was not participating in practice on Thursday. Devontae Parker, that's a one-week concussion. Uh, Jacoby Myers is on week two, so he's probably not going to play. So this, this is just like you've got a really banged up offense against a bad defense and a good offense against a great defense. So I, I don't love this game. Find me a diamond at the wide receiver position for New England. Nelson Aguilar. Um, Nelson Aguilar, certainly last week he was. Find me a cubic zirconium in that, in that uh, wide receiver. Room. That's a better way to look at yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Kendrick like Bourne, Tyquan Thornton. One, yeah, I mean, they, they, these are all fake ones. You just need to fool them one week. Yeah, look, Nelson will be the 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 primary receiver. Nine targets last week compared to five for Thornton, the rookie. Five for Kendrick Bourne. The the vanishing of Kendrick Bourne this season is very interesting. He wasn't like a full time player last year, but he just he made a ton of splash plays for them. I won't be surprised if he's the best the best option it, this week. It wouldn't be surprising, but I think that the volume and the probability will be Aguilar. The real beneficiary of this situation could be Hunter Henry as well, involving him in the offense. Uh, the Raiders are bottom half against the tight end position. Yeah. I am very comfortable with Hunter Henry. Yeah, that that that's, uh, I think, a fine back end, tight end that you could go with. Um, but we're not excited. I mean, the only reason to play – Patriots wide receivers is to take advantage of missing Jacoby and Parker and get a cheap option in you know a, a place where you're paying a value for it. So like a DraftKings lineup or something like that. I don't think in a playoff game I'm playing wide receiving options even in this good matchup from the New England Patriots side of the ball. And you have on the other side you've got a couple guys that might be back here. Yeah, they may. In uh, Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller. Josh McDaniel said on Wednesday we're hopeful. But obviously, we're going to let their bodies tell us a lot here as we go through the next three days. So it's a... Uh, I think they're both on the field. It's a it's a tough one, though. It's a late game on Sunday. You've got three Saturday games and all the morning games. I think you're going to have to make a decision well before Sunday. Agreed. You're not going to play them this week, but I think you'll you'll see them this week on the field. And really, you're just hoping that they don't crush the uh, one of the things that's been so nice about the Raiders offense over the last month or two has been the fact that it's all Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs they they account for yeah, it's been nice the offense and now if that ball gets spread around a little bit more you just hope that they don't you know hurt your shiny playoff objects too much <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee is seven and six they take on the seven and six Chargers really excited about this game the DraftKings Sportsbook line Chargers minus three the over-unders 46 and a half Games in Los Angeles. Chargers are getting cooking on the offensive side of the football. Titans pass defense is terrible. That sounds like a playoff delight. And Derrick Henry's really, really good. I think this game's going to stay competitive. Uh, this is the kind of week where, you know, Tennessee just puts on the hard hats, goes on the road, and makes a game out of it. The Yeti, it's going to be... Really, really good. The run defense for the Chargers, not that good. Have we looked up the weather in Vermont? Um, I'm not sure that you – it's all snow at this point, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's – Okay, he's we're, just complete. We're, we're firmly in the snow, and that's good for the Yeti. But other Titans in this matchup, Chig. it's probably just Chig, a conquo. Yeah. That's it, because he's a tight end. Obviously, if he was a wide receiver, not going to be good enough. He was uh, 6 for 45 on a touchdown last week. Uh, he's a rookie tight end that we've talked up a little bit over the last couple of weeks. He has emerged, and without other receiving options, uh, then uh, you can throw him in there. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are both starts of the week on the Chargers side. Herbert's in your lineup. Eckler's in your lineup. Um, 
people have asked a lot of questions about Josh Palmer and Gerald Everett. Those are those fringe players, but Man. the matchup is really good. Like I don't, you know, the the pass funnel situation for Tennessee has provided 13.6 fantasy points per game over the last six weeks to the tight end position. Everett isn't as necessary, but he's still getting targets. He yeah. is an incredibly tough decision. Would you guys go uh, just the match? I mean, it's probably, but the matchup of Greg D against Arizona or Gerald Everett? I'll play the D. Yep. But uh, I, I think it could be good for both of them. By the way, severe weather alert, winter storm warning in northern Vermont. Oh, <laughs> watch out. Was that a little Santa coming through? Ho, 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 Merry Yeti. Very, very uh, – Okay. I, I, I'll have a nice Derrick Henry performance under the tree. That's fine. Yeah. Cincinnati – Stay safe. Nine and four. Tampa Bay, six and seven. And uh, Bengals, you know, one of uh, the top six teams in terms of Super Bowl odds right now. Tampa Bay. Not. Trying, trying, <laughs> to, <laughs> trying to hang on. Six and seven, division leaders. DraftKings Sportsbook line – Cincinnati minus three and a half on the road. The over under is forty four and a half. One stumbling team, one not so stumbling team. Joe Burrow, quarterback four on the year. Uh, you are starting Joe Burrow on the road here. Jamar Chase, he's going to be great. But beyond that, you have questions of injury uh, concerns at T with T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Yeah. If Higgins is active, what are you doing, Mike Wright? I uh, will. So, I mean, it's very, uh, very specific. If you're talking my team, just you guys don't probably have the the same roster I have, but the options will be like Antonio Gibson. Um, I don't even remember my lineup. I'm so tilted. What about over. Elijah Moore. Um, I would not go Elijah Moore. Uh, Zach Wilson is bad at football. Hollywood Brown. That no, no. I would Jerry I, Judy. Jerry Judy. I would consider it. Joshua Palmer. No, I'd still roll with T. Higgins. Really? Yeah. I would take Palmer over, over Higgins. You're saying with the question marks, if, even yeah. if he starts? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, obviously I would take him if he doesn't start over him. But, uh, yeah, if T. Higgins is, is active, I, I worry about what you might not get, what kind of limitations, what kind of re-aggravation to the injury. You know, it's like I, I think I would rather have a safe nine or ten fantasy points than the hopeful, uh, you know, fifteen twenty that Higgins can do, they could also be three or zero. With what about Alan Lazard, I would play Alan Lazard for sure. Yeah, this is one of those things where you're not you're not just gambling on an injury. You're gambling on an injury that literally just benched him the game before. So he, you know, this was the exact same. Yeah, he got rest though. The same. He's ready to go. Right. Got, well, no, because he reheard it real quick in the in. <laughs> You know, warming up, and not only that, but when we see these hamstring reaggravation issues, they aren't you, they, yeah. they they aren't usually something that is just give it a couple days and you're good to go. I mean, think about some of these guys, Keenan Allen and and uh, Darren Waller. They they missed so much time to get back. Now it does not appear to be the same level of severity. They haven't talked about you know IR or anything like that. So I, I don't want to put you know, things saying he's he's going to take weeks and weeks to come back, but those are fears that we don't have time to get wrong anymore. Lots of tough decisions on the Tampa side. Bengals are a good defense. You have two uh, two running back options, Rashad White and Leonard Fournette. Uh, I like Rashad White. I like the guaranteed volume in the passing game. Are you playing both players? Yeah, I think both are available, but if you're saying one or the other, you got to go Rashad White. Godwin's been great target wise, but Mike Evans yeah, has do not. Do something, Mike no, Evans. Chris, Chris Godwin's getting targets, but what he has done with these targets has been very, very disappointing. You, you can look back over the the past six weeks with seeing it, with averaging double digit targets, and he's been inside the top twenty four in two of six games. Since but, that, uh, but his with, floor is it has his been floor pretty is high. safe, sure. But in the playoffs, I mean. I'm not looking for so rock solid floor. I need some ceiling. This is the lowest yards per attempt of Tom Brady's career, at least as far back as 
we can go on our website, which I know career his career is probably longer than the amount of years his, we have there. His career does predate the internet. The internet yeah. 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 So uh, 4.6 yards per attempt has a lot to do with that. So um, it's just depressing. Can you start Mike Evans? Do you have to start Mike Evans? Oh, sorry, that was last game, but this year it's 6.2 yards okay. per attempt. But Mike Evans is just one of those players that if you put him out there, you're hoping that the talent wins out, the opportunity wins out, and you hope that it's a shootout because Cincinnati's going to be able to put up points. So Evans or Pittman? Oh, Evans. Give me a break. I would be Pittman for sure on that one. Yep. All Go right. ahead. Sure. Wow. Water bed. How'd your, how'd your last Pittman water bed go? Great. I mean, phenomenal. Uh, it was very, very important um, that uh, I lost that bet uh, because I needed <laughs> Paris Campbell to do enough to uh, get out a win that caused me to get a one-on-one. Um, a, a roster decision that I am actively facing uh, with me and my on my son's league is Donovan Peoples-Jones or Mike Evans. And right now, Donovan is in my lineup. What would you do, Andy? I'd play Evans. Okay. Yeah. He, he's, he is – Andy is happily speaking as someone that has not in his main leagues been struggling with Mike Evans. That's not true. You don't, I have been. Have you? Yeah, but I don't – you know, I, I know it's been a bad run for Mike Evans, but these things over the course of, a you know, a, a superstar's career even out and – you know, we saw it last week. He had a 70-yard touchdown pass called back by holding. There, There's going to be downfield shots. He's not going to miss them all for the rest of the year. I mean, do I have to do this? Oh, no. Sure. I mean, you can. You, do I have to do this? I mean, the, the, you I, are the vessel, but I I mean, don't. It's speaking to me right now. Mike Evans, far. touchdown guarantee. Oh, man. Oh, no. What just happened? Put it down. Put it down. Okay. I mean, you guys, oh, wow. you guys back in the spirits, oh, and they man. came. Hey, well. Great. I, I'm then, glad we did that. Yeah. Now who are you starting, Pittman or Evans? Well, now Evans. Well, one of them's getting a touchdown <laughs> yeah. for sure. Uh, well, that's good. Uh, Mike Evans will get back into the end zone and break that streak this week. Wow. Um, which, you know, I did. It's, it's only fair because uh, I did do a touchdown guarantee with Godwin earlier yeah. in the year to break his streak. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, those playing Mike Evans would be like surpassing 70 yards. Also fine. I'll take that. Yes, Mike Evans, uh, renewed touchdown. Oh, man. That's great. That's great news. I'm <laughs> so happy to hear that. Uh, but Tom Brady, 20 fantasy points one time this year. But the options are thin. Like, you go on Aaron Rodgers over Brady, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. But that's probably not an option. Are you playing golf over Brady? That might be a real decision. No. Man. <laughs> I, I do think that uh, Zach Wilson starting hurts Goff as I well. Agree. I you, agree. You you would expect them to yeah, play hurts, slower. It hurts everybody. Yeah. Man, it's a real bummer. <laughs> I mean, Mike White was so if much If we fun. hadn't had Zach Wilson elevated above Flacco, I don't think we're worried. I think if Flacco's out there, we're going, all right, though. Yeah, because if it's Joe Flacco, you're getting 40-plus pass attempts. And you I know think Zach that – Dallas is going to get a couple easy touchdowns yeah. off turn. I think Zach Wilson will be better this week. I really do. Well, better than than a dumpster fire is yes. just a dumpster. That's fine. <laughs> That's, it's, it's still not a place you want yeah. to be. Agreed. I agree. I just think I think he'll be better. Um, All right. That that is. I I have not heard that as a quote. I don't know if you just made that <laughs> I, up. It just came. To that me. is a great quote. Better than a dumpster fire is still a dumpster. Quote of the day. Cheers. Not a quote you want to be associated with as an NFL quarterback, but it is it is a good quote. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got Kyle sending me the Mike Evans touchdown odds <laughs> odds here on on DraftKings. We're gonna make some money off this. All right. Well, the New York Giants are seven five and one. The Commanders are seven five and one. Jason, you asked the other day why do they put those darn ties into your playoff scenarios? It's because teams keep tying this year. The DraftKings sportsbook line: Washington minus four and a half. The over under is forty. They literally tied each other two weeks ago, but this time it's personal. Can we do it again? Um, tie again? The winner. Yeah, a tie. <laughs> another tie. Uh, do two ties count as like a win for both teams? I think basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, because it's like half a win. The winner of this one gets a leg up on the wild card game. 
Washington is the leader in controlling the ball game, controlling the clock, running the football. Their defense has been top 10 against all positions over the course of the year, especially good against running backs and wide receivers in the last two weeks. You don't have headliners, right, in the receiving game for the Giants. So, you know, it's hard to come into this game and say, wow, Darius Slayton is the guy. Well, you know, Isaiah Hodgins is scored in two straight. Richie James gets short area work. Um, I guess Darius Slayton is the one that you would start of those of those options. Yeah, Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton or Cordero Patterson? Asking for a friend. Wow. Uh, Very important. You get this right. Please. <laughs> I think I'd play Slayton. Yeah, that's where I lean as well. Saquon Barkley. It has been a rough ride of late. I don't know if it gets better on the road against Washington. Um, yards per carry down it. Have we heard anything about his neck situation? He, I believe he was removed from the injury report okay, entirely. So he's been given a clean bill of health. I would imagine he gets a uh, much better utilization. Uh, Daniel Jones is an emergency start because of his rushing prowess, but it's still a nervous start in this game. I think Washington is going to, I mean, they're pretty heavy favorites at home. I think they're going to control the ball game. The running game, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of optimism around finding value on New York. I don't know if you guys are different. Yeah, no, it's at least the last time we saw the Daniel Jones against the Manders, it was 12 carries, 71 yards on the ground. So maybe, and that's like, that's a much higher carry count than he has been averaging for the last six games or so. So maybe they're, there's just something the way that they're playing defense that Daniel Jones is exploiting. Here's a player I'm really unhappy that I'm facing this week. Terry McLaurin historically torches these Giants. Uh, averages 10 targets, 7 receptions, almost 100 yards, half a touchdown. The Giants' defense has been rotten against wideouts over the last six weeks. They've been falling apart. They yeah. looked good in the beginning of the year. They were holding teams to low scores, squeaking out some close victories. But their defense is one to target right now, uh, pretty much across the board. So yeah, McLaurin is in your lineups. Brian you, Robinson and Antonio I was say, Gibson. Do you have do you have any confidence with Jahan Dotson, who's I mean, he's we've got four games back. The snaps have increased each and every time. And then this last time we saw him it was against the Giants. Nine targets, five for fifty four. What touchdown. were his targets the week before? The one before that? Yeah. It, against Atlanta it was one. Yeah, see that I just don't But I his don't, snaps jumped from sixty one to seventy nine percent. Yeah, I, I have a hard time. Uh, you thinking that he has enough guaranteed volume like he can obviously get a touch he can have a big play he's a great player bright future but in the playoffs I don't think I am confident enough that he'll have six plus targets to put him in my lineup well I mean the matchup's much better for the for the Washington uh commander so would you go the Dotson with the fears that you have or, the, or Darius Slayton Slayton over Dotson okay uh nothing like that playoff decision for yeah. somebody Brian Robinson, double digits fantasy-wise, three or four games. Antonio Gibson, limited due to the foot again on Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's, so, did you say Brian Robinson was limited? He is limited due to the quad injury, yeah. I mean, it's that's a that's pretty brutal. Brian Robinson looked like he was in line for at least a a not a safe floor with a decent chance of a touchdown. So I, I was you know warming on the idea of of getting Brian Robinson in, in here as a running back too. With both of them limited, I think you need to wait and get some more information, see what the Friday reports look like. All right, anything else from this game you guys want to cover, or can we move on? Moving on. The Rams are 4-9. and nine. They take on the Packers on Monday night, 5-8. and eight. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Green Bay minus 7. The over-under is 39.5. Probably not the Monday night matchup they were expecting when they booked this one on the schedule. What, Baker Mayfield? Well, I mean, that'll Monday be night? that'll be fun, but the uh, the records are not what they expected. Probably thought you'd have a couple, you know, 11-win teams at this point in the season or something. Both defenses are giving up a ton of yards right now. Uh, it, neither doing what people expected. So what are the big decisions you're looking at for this Rams-Packers matchup? Uh, yeah, Go I mean, ahead. I think Aaron Rodgers, we've brought his name up several times. This is a matchup where I'm, uh, you know, he now is a streaming option for some of these injured teams. You lost Kyler or, um, you know, you've lost Mike White. I think he's the guy I'm looking to pick up simply because his weapons are together and whole and healthy for the first time 
pretty much all year. The fact that you've got Christian Watson's breakout where the defense is going to have to say we've got to we've got to worry about him. I mean, you know, you might have the Rams putting Ramsey on on Christian Watson, opening things up for Lazard and you've got Cobb and Dobbs and uh Tunyon. So to me, it's it's hard to pick exactly which wide receiver at, other than Christian Watson you would want to start, but I do think that Aaron Rodgers has a good game. Is there a chance that the Rams just can't do enough on offense where that passing game gets a little bit stifled? Yes, certainly. The Rams offense stinks. We're we're going to be talking about. Did you know Baker was named the offensive player of the week? <laughs> awesome. It's, uh, I think awesome. it's one drive. I awesome. think it's a fair thing. Justin Jefferson, how many receiving yards did he have last he week? He broke the, the Vikings franchise. Oh, way more yeah. than that. It was like 225. That's disrespectful. Yeah. Baker Mayfield did not have a great game. He had a great two drives yeah but one i mean off i get it like flying over from the east coast and learning a playbook basically overnight and then beating a team which you were heavy underdog having a hollywood ending in hollywood yeah, yes i mean precisely all right well then let's talk about the rams let's can you play can you that. play uh put the put the wide receivers in order like there is a league i'm thinking about playing two two out well in this week i think he had nine or ten targets last week you're that's that's a wild with Baker playing yeah. a bunch of snaps. So last year or sorry, last week, two two nine targets turned into five for fifty. If he gets that amount of targets, he will always get two to four rushing attempts is kind of my. So I'm looking at that and saying, well, is this more of like the McCall Hardman type of uh, you could get a random game here or there? Maybe. I'm, Are I'm, you playing Skoranek over or, over Tutu? So I imagine the 61. <laughs> I, I am that playing, sentence. I imagine the 61% snaps for Tutu. That had to be the highest of his career. Yeah, Skoranek was out there for 100% of the snaps, was just right there in the targets, uh, had more receiving yards. I, I would definitely be playing Ben Skoranek ahead of Tutu Atwell. Okay. Cam Akers? If you are cool with either you get 40 yards – or you get 40 and a touchdown. If if you're cool with that, then yeah. Cam Akers is someone that I would not want to start, but he would be the back to have last week. 42% of snaps to Kyron Williams, 30%. But that was way down from the week prior uh, where you hoped that you saw, oh, okay, so Cam Akers is now going to be the you know 70 percent utilization i don't think there's any trust that can be put into these backs he, he had the if you remember he had the fumble and then he was it seemed at least what watching the game that he was penalized because of the fumble and then came aj back dylan later. you'd play him over cam Akers. yes okay all the rankings and starts at tools on the website the fantasy a reminder again the dfs live stream today at 2 p.m eastern we do have uh we got another segment Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, you, you're not going to get the whole witchcraft thing on the almost upsets unless you take power from somewhere else. So Yeah, there must be balance. Last week, I had I had it in the bag. All I needed was like Geno Smith not to go on a timeoutless drive <laughs> against Carolina that was meaningless. To They were losing no matter what. Jason was conceding to me, as he always does on the old Slack channel, and then Gino threw a touchdown to Marquise Goodwin, and here we are. Let's spin it. Wheel of Shame. What, what, is, what does Andy get to do this week? Spin the wheel! The wheel of Andy. All right. Uh, cowboy... Joe Dirt. Oh, boy. Joe Dirt. Sun City. What in the world Ooh. is Sun City? Am I well, old? For those people that are unfamiliar with Sun City, uh, the, Arizona has a city called Sun City that yeah. is an elderly retirement community. <laughs> it's a pretty good Vulcan. Oh, that, that does look You're really nice. You're not done. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah. You got to rock them shades. You probably just got your eyes checked <laughs> and dilated. And then you've got a prop. <laughs> oh, and a steering wheel. <laughs> You're gonna be driving real <laughs> that, slow. That wheel's way too low. Uh, you got to hold that thing up in your face. Like, yeah, that's there. We go. Mm -hmm. Now get, we're Sun City driving, baby. <laughs> get those arms of work out. <laughs> Who had the idea to come up with a steering wheel prop? Well, well this the, is good. The world will never know. I can get my eyes dilated today. This is perfect. 
Uh, we are jumping into these lineups. I, I am loving this way more than I thought I would. The bald cap is outstanding. <laughs> uh, well, let's let's dive in. I can at least see. <laughs> let's see what meaningless lineup I roll out there this week. Why don't you guys start? Maybe I don't know if the order matters. Sure. What, what I will kick it off. Uh, and the here's what <laughs> here's what happened to my lineup. We sit down to record. My lineup was already set. Mike White was my quarterback, and there was some news right before we had to record the show, so I had to make a pivot, and my lineup, I just I liked it way too much, so at some point, at some point, Fulkland, try and spot where I had to bail out and save a bunch of money so that I could get an adequate quarterback, but I was able to get Dak Prescott into my Ooh. lineup. Uh, let me pull What's up. What's the cost there? Dak Prescott, 6,200 against the Jacksonville okay. Jaguars. My yeah. start of the week. I like yeah. that. That's uh, He He wasn't in most of my builds, but I think he's great for the price. I went a little bit higher. I, I'm with Justin Herbert, uh, 7,200 sure. uh, to have Justin Herbert. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is over 300 passing yards just for his uh, you know, expected nice. output there. So I think he has a great game against Tennessee's pass funnel defense. So just to be clear, sixty two hundred for pre for Dak. Yeah, seventy two hundred for Justin. Oh, Jalen Hurts is coming. Jalen Hurts is my quarterback at eighty two hundred against the Chicago wow. Bears. Wow, that was my original quarterback until okay. last night. I had her. I played with Herbert and Dak throughout yeah. the week. All right, yeah, you like how I look? I Th love this it. this will be really fun. This the is fact a good that time. I I can't remember the last week where we had three different quarterbacks. Yeah. Such a a big deal in our lineups. All right, Mike, let's hear those running backs. All right, I am going with Super Camario, Alvin Kamara at 6,800 against the Atlanta Falcons at home. I'm choosing to believe that he will be having the big week. And my other starting running back is Miles Sanders against the Chicago Bears at 6,500, the DraftKings Sportsbook. It's sitting at – they got his rushing line at 68.5 while he's averaging 82 yards per game – and, or per week and the Chicago Bears like if you beat them anywhere it's on the ground I'm excited for miles this week seems like a bad line <laughs> I'm gonna make a little note ski here Mr. Moore uh, who are I, your running backs so I also have uh Alvin Kamara at 6800 uh matchup looks good and the price is right and I have the Yeti, Derrick Henry Ooh, at 8000 against the Chargers defense that hasn't been able to really bottle up the run Transformed to the Yeti. <laughs> My running backs starters here, Derrick Henry, 8,000. So I also have the Yeti, and I'm going with Rashad White again against the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, okay. The PPR uh, baseline for Rashad White, he's only 5,400. I'm going to bottle that up this week and hope for a big game. Uh, my first wide receiver, it's Elijah Moore. He was supposed to be stacked with Mike White. And his price at 3600 when you have to scramble to, to get a lineup together before recording, it's pretty hard to replace a player at that is priced right there. Is that your blinker? That should have been on the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, know. as soon as you got the wheel. Uh, so I needed him to unlock some other things for my roster. Mike Williams, big Mike Willie sitting at 6300 I believe Jason started the week. Yep. So I like that with your Herbert. Going to be giving me some juice. And then... Jamar Chase against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 8,300. I have accepted my fate that T. Higgins is limited, possibly out. Tyler Boyd has a broken hand. Jamar Chase, last man standing, and he is good enough that he can get it all done. Yeah, Jamar Chase is great. He is also in my lineup at 8,300. Um, I also have Elijah Moore at 3,600. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. And at wide receiver, I have Big Mike. Wow. So we are the same what? at wide receiver. We're not very different. I have Mike Williams and Elijah Moore as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I Where do are you guys saving your money? But I do have Devontae Smith. I have Devontae Smith okay. at 6,400 stacked with Jalen Hurts. Come on back, Dallas Goddard. And uh, so there you go. The last three, Mike, tight end flex and defense. So uh, hold on here. I have to. Uh, so my, my tight end is. Uh, Chigakonkwo at 3,100 uh, with Traylon Burks and his situation. And then my flex is Tony Pollard mm. at 7,100. I don't necessarily love that I have Dak and Pollard, but what are you going to do? And 
My defense is uh, the Houston Texans at $2,000 oh, oh, no. against the Kansas City Chiefs. What? They may go negative on me, but that was the only way that I could move from Mike White to Dak I Prescott. spotted it. <laughs> I <laughs> spotted it, everybody. <laughs> Even with these glasses on, I could see that. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. if I had to guess where you saved your money, it was probably right there. He just jammed Dak in, bottomed out the defense, and we moved on. Jason, tight end. We all make our choices. Tight end, oh, flex, man. and defense. Uh, my tight end, I've got Greg Dulcich at 3600 I uh, also did not spend up. I mean, you want to know where I saved my money? It was more on the flex. I've got Nelson Aguilar, 3400 uh playing wide receiver. We don't know, but it looks like Jacoby Myers and yeah. uh, uh, Devontae Parker, Parker will be out. And at defense, I've got the Broncos in mile high against the Cool. Our against our hapless uh, Arizona Cardinals, so that'll be a tough. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see if the Broncos or the Texans are better. Chiga Conquo's my tight end at thirty one hundred. Figure one of you would have him. The Broncos defense is my defense at twenty seven hundred. <laughs> Darn, I was really hoping you went Texans. And my flex is Ezekiel Elliott at sixty two hundred. So okay. we have Pollard and Elliott across the field from each other. Can't wait to lose this week. I had the Broncos. Yeah, and that, that was makes in, sense. That was in the Mike yeah. White build. And my why my $100 of remaining salary can't even get me up to the Titans. No, no. That was uh <laughs> that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS at DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode. Boy, I look good. You look great, man. Enjoy the weekend. Good luck, everybody, yes. Saturday and Sunday. Good luck, everybody. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.